All right, let's talk about graphing parabolas that have this uh, middle term, bx, in it, okay? Again, it's just going to be this idea of uh, taking the parent parabola and, and sort of moving it or placing it in the right place to, to begin with. So um, we're going to quickly learn a couple things here about how to graph ones when they have a bx, okay? So first thing we want to do is we want to look, okay, which way is this thing going to open? Is it going to be opening up or is it going to be opening down? And you could look at this by just the lead term here, right? The coefficient on the x squared, this a. If this is, if a is a positive number, then you know that the parabola is going to be opening up, okay? And when I say up, it means it's going to be, the vertex will be the lowest point and it's going to face uh, in your... <coughs> It'll grow away and up uh, in the positive direction, okay? And then if A is negative, the whole thing is going to be flipped. It'll be facing down. The vertex will be the highest point. And as uh, you move away from the vertex, it'll move down, okay? Second part is we want to find the axis of symmetry, okay? And the axis of symmetry is the line, like here, this red line. It's the line that runs up and down, right? It's the x value, basically, for where the parabola is, okay? It's based, or not the parabola, I'm sorry, where the vertex is, okay? And so you find the axis of symmetry, and that means the vertex lies somewhere on this line, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to plug in that value for x and then find what does y equal. And then once you know x and y, now you know the coordinates of your vertex, okay? And then we'll plot the y-intercept and its corresponding point after that. And what you do there is, okay, we're going to plot on here. Well, the nice thing about this is this line here, okay? If anywhere on this line, x is 0. So you can plug in 0 here, you plug 0 here. Those go away. And so you know that whenever x is 0, you're just going to be left with the y is equal to c. So 0 comma c, okay? And once you get those, then you can use your axis of symmetry for one, and then you can also use this relationship, right, the parabola that we used, that we found, um, the parent parabola, in order to plot the rest of the points. So let's go ahead and give this a shot, right? So let's take a look. Here's one. We have y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 2, okay? So first thing we want to do is we want to decide is this going to open up or down. I know it's going to open up, so I like to put a little bit of an arrow right there just to make sure that I remember that we're going to be facing up. Okay. Next, let's find our axis of symmetry, okay? And this is going to be where x is equal to negative b over 2a. Um, now, you know, I typically like to give you explanation as to why these formulas work, and I will in uh, some future lessons. But for now, let's just go ahead and let's just work with that x is equal to negative b over 2a, that this formula here is going to give you the axis of symmetry, okay? I, again, I will, in future videos and future lessons, I will definitely explain to you why this works. But right now is not the time or the place. So let's go ahead and use it. So we know that x is equal to negative b over 2a. So if I take x, okay, now it's negative, and in this case, b is negative 6. So it's going to be the opposite of negative 6, or negative negative 6, over 2 times 3, okay? So that means my <coughs> axis of symmetry is going to be at, well, this becomes positive, right? 6 over 2 times 3 is 6, so x is going to be equal to 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I know my axis of symmetry is 1. So that means that <coughs> this parabola, <coughs> excuse me, this parabola is going to, or I'm sorry, the vertex of this parabola is going to be somewhere along this line here, okay? So this will be my axis of symmetry, okay? All right, well, let's continue on. So if I know that x is equal to 1, I can go ahead and plug in and find y. So we can do y is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 2. All right, well, let's go ahead and evaluate. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2. So I can do 3 minus 6. Okay. Order of operations, I have to subtract before I add here. Okay, so 3 minus 6 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus 2 is going to be uh, negative 1. Okay, so I know that my axis of symmetry here is going to be at 1, comma, negative 1. So 1, comma, negative 1. Okay, I'm sorry, not your axis, your vertex. Okay, sorry, I keep doing that. <coughs> so this is my vertex. Okay, my vertex is going to be 1, comma, negative 1. Now, I also know that this is going to be my x or my y-intercept. So if I go over to 2... Okay, 
I now know that this is going to be one of my points. And this should actually make sense because, look, here's my vertex. If I move one away from it, typically my parent parabola says I go up one. But because I have an A is equal to 3, this is going to be a stretch. So I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to have at, put a multiplier on there of 3. So normally over 1, up 1. Multiply that by 3, up 3. And that makes, that makes sense. It should be there, OK? Well, because this axis, this is an axis of symmetry, I know that this is going to be a mirror point here, OK? So I can put that point there. And then let's go ahead and find another point. So if I now I can just I ignore the rest of this, and I work with my parent parabola, OK? Okay, and remember that a is 3, so I'm going to have to use a multiplier of 3. So typically, I would move 2 away. If I move 2 away, I have to square 2, 4. But in this case, I have to multiply that by 3. So moving 2, 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times 3, right? Using this as a multiplier, 3 is going to be 12. So from here, I'm going to go up 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Put the dot there, and then because, again, axis of symmetry, right? This is two away from the axis of symmetry, so if I go two this way, I put a dot there, okay? And there is my parabola. Voila. Okay. And I've graphed my parabola. And there you have it, okay? And we could test it if we want. You can take a point like this. You could take, uh, let's see, what is that? Two comma two, right? The ballerina point, 2 comma 2, you can put it that in there and evaluate it in here, and you will notice that it equals the, that it will work. Okay, if you plug in 2 here, you put the 2 there, multiply and subtract, and you'll end up with 2. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on here. I discussed this a little bit beforehand, okay? The minimum and maximum values, okay? Whenever that the, your um, uh, A is going to be greater than 0, Okay, because it's pointing up, it means that your vertex is the minimum value. Okay, this is sort of the lowest point. Okay, that I can go. And then, conversely, if a is negative, right? You know that this is going to be maximum value because it's going to point down. Okay, <clears throat> so keep those in mind, and these will especially help us later in the chapter and with some of the word problems. Okay, so let's see. Let's find the minimum or maximum value of this function. And really what this is saying is we want to find the vertex, okay? And then decide, is that going to be the bottom point or is that going to be the top point? Okay, well, we can quickly determine that, first of all, this is going to be pointing down, right? My parabola is going to be going down. So that means that this, okay, my vertex is going to be my maximum point, okay? My maximum value. Okay, so now we want to find it. So let's just do this. We're going to find use <coughs> find our x, right? The axis of symmetry, negative b over two a. Okay, and so let's go ahead and plug that in. Well, I know that b is negative twelve, so negative negative twelve over two comma. I know that a is negative three. All right, so let's evaluate this, simplify it. So negative negative twelve is positive twelve, and then two times negative three is negative six. So that means x is equal to negative two. Okay. Well, now let's go ahead and find the value of negative two. Okay. In fact, let me do this. I'm going to take this, kind of move it over here, so I have a little more space. Okay. And let's we'll make this blue. We'll go. Um, okay, so I want to know the value of this when I plug in, right, the value of this function when x is negative 2. So negative 3 and times negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 plus 10. Okay, so then the function at negative 2 is going to be equal to, well, negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 minus 12 times, or negative 12 times negative 2 is going to be plus 24 plus 10. Okay, so that means that the value of this function at negative 2 is going to be, well, let's see, I've got negative 12, well, 24 and 10, right? Let's see, this is negative 12, that's going to be plus 24, so I have 12 plus 10 is 22. Does that sound right? 12 and 10, 22. This is 34, 34. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, let's check this. I'm, feeling, I'm not so feeling so confident about this. So let's see. Let's try it again. Negative 2 squared is 4. All right. And 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Okay. And then 
Negative 12 times negative 2 is going to be positive 24 plus 10. Okay, yeah, it looks good. So that means my vertex here is negative 2 comma 22. And this here will be my maximum value. Okay, well, this really gives you all the tools that you need um, to work with this chapter. Again, it's just the idea of using the pair parabola, maybe doing a vertical stretch, maybe doing a vertical uh, uh, vertical shrink, one of those two. It just requires you to find the vertex by using the uh, axis of symmetry, right? The x, uh, this part, all right? Using that, and that's the major idea here, to find the axis of symmetry and then to find the actual vertex. It's, vertex itself.